So welcome everybody to the second seminar for the Santa Maria Open Source Learning Academy. We are here live on Tuesday, August 23rd at two o'clock Pacific. And for those of you who are joining us live, well, you're gonna get the benefit first of all of attendance and credit and all that good school stuff. But most importantly, we're going to work together on making sure that you have full access to all the technology that the Santa Maria Open Source Learning Academy provides and that you're using it to the best advantage of all of us. So with that being said, um, before we get started, actually, because Dr. Ulrich and I haven't really had that much of a chance to connect over the last couple of weeks, I'd kind of like to hear how it's going from your perspective, because this is your first semester as lead teacher. Um, it's going well. I have only had one grabby student. And that's good. That's good. We're in the third week of school, and I've only had one crabby student. So that's a good start to me. Um, some students are doing a great deal of work, and they're posting. Um, some, you know, it's really a mixed bag. I really would like to, and I am encouraging at each meeting, I'm sharing the blog with them, asking them to post on the blog, and also um, showing them which parts of assignments they can copy and paste and add to their blog with the hope of eventually um, having them going directly to the blog. So um, we'll see how that goes into the, the following weeks. Well, that's great. And you know, in this world, especially in 2022, I know lots of crabby people. So the fact that you've only had one crabby meeting, that's kind only of one, awesome. only one. <laughs> Um, it's kind of like the traffic report. So if anybody listens to the radio and if that's still a medium anybody cares about and we hear the traffic report, we always hear about the accident. And we never hear about the thousands, the millions of cars that pass through the same exact intersection every single hour, just fine. So in a way, I know Kevin, Anthony and Jossie, you're our live attendees so far. The Santa Maria Open Source Learning Academy has a pattern that's developed. And I've watched this, and Martin, I know you've seen it too. Over the last couple of years, the people who show up tend to be the most awesome. And it's not like I'm saying that about favorites. It's like I'm saying that about the people who show up are also the people who post, who get it, who show that they get it. And so in some ways, the three of you who are here live so far might feel like, well, duh, about some of this information that I'm about to share. However, first of all, repetition is always the key to learning. But second of all, I really want you guys to get greedy today. Yes, I'm going to be curating some stuff that we already know so that people who watch the recording later, because we will be encouraging folks who are new to watch this stuff because they're going to need it. Um, but if you have a question about the technology that hasn't been answered, or if you're wondering how to do something new, or if you want to ask a what, some of my favorite questions are the what if questions. You know, like, what if we had fill in the blank as a tool? Well, get greedy today. This is for you. Um, I want to start by piggybacking on what Dr. Ulrich said, and I'm going to put the link to the Santa Maria Open Source Learning Academy site in the chat. Um, as always, that site is our library, it's our student union, it's our announcement center. So please make sure if you haven't yet made it part of your routine to go on that site by eight o'clock every morning, the agenda for the day is posted and throughout the day announcements show up, but especially if there's something timely, I make sure that that's posted in the morning. And the way that Dr. Ulrich and I are dividing our responsibilities this year, she is your point person for everything you need in your individual course program. So your day-to-day -day, uh, check-ins, your program for your uh, transcripts and your credit toward graduation, all of that goes through Dr. Ulrich. Martin and I are sort of lurking in the background and supporting the technology. Um, but as we go on, I do want to make sure that everybody is checking the blog and just to check in live and give people an image of what you're missing. If you haven't seen it, today's seminar, the announcements right here on the blog. And so is the invitation, all the information people would need to connect. 
I mentioned the daily agendas. This is where all of these things live. So if you're wondering, like, how about my journal topics? How do I do those? Well, remember, every single thing that you write can also be counted. And we're going to talk about categorizing your posts. But these can also be counted for 21st century English, writing and composition, English 3, whatever your English or language arts requirements. And if you choose to write a journal topic that incorporates history or math or anything else you're studying, if you can make a meaningful connection and you want Dr. Ulrich to know, hey, listen, you know, the standards might be for my assignments on Edmentum or Khan Academy or somewhere else. And Dr. Ulrich, I just realized in saying somewhere else, I owe you a couple of uh, links to current events websites. I haven't forgotten that. Um, you're on mute, sorry. I, I saw your mouth moving, but I couldn't hear you. Yeah, That's because I share a classroom, and so it's kind of noisy in the background. So I'm going to, I'll just click on and off. Okay, cool. And feel free to use the chat too. So as a reminder, not only are your journal topics covered there and anything that we have in common, like mental and physical fitness posts, those aren't going away just because you are more independently responsible for your work. And here is a good place uh, for our live participants, Anthony, Jossie, and Kevin, if you have any questions about this, feel free to ask me. But there isn't a day that goes by that your mind and your body are not important. So I'll give you a perfect example. I was absolutely anxious this morning, had too many things going on, too many things, and I just needed to slow down. And I don't practice, let me back that up. I don't preach anything that I don't practice. So I actually took some moments of mindfulness. Nobody's watching me. I'm not doing it for credit. It doesn't impact my paycheck, but it does help in here. And it helps me perform better in everything I do next. So every day I will continue to provide a prompt for our minutes of mindfulness. Is it a have to? No, it's a get to. This is a resource for you. The physical fitness part of this, remember that physical fitness doesn't just include exercise, although it certainly can. Um, in fact, I'll use myself as an example here. It also includes nutrition and it includes rest. So if you're doing something in your, well, it's because I don't have that date up yet because I am behind on my blog. But if you think about the stuff that you eat, and I'm hoping this is the right blog post. No, it's not. Or the way that you get your rest. I know some of you are vampires who stay up until crazy hours in the morning. But the important thing to remember is, and of course, now that I'm prompting myself, I can't find this on the fly. Um, normally, I don't post about my breakfast. But in this case, I actually posted about my breakfast. Why? Because it was my answer to, geez, I'm feeling low energy. What do I need to do for fuel so that I can perform at my best throughout the rest of my day? I want you all, and this is where the Open Source Learning Academy is a little bit different than school. And I'm gonna go ahead and say it, it's better. Why? Because ordinarily, teachers don't make it their business to talk about the rest of our lives. What does it take to improve our memories or focus better or just simply feel a sense of calm? What does it take to feel like we have the strength and stamina to meet the challenges of our day? Well, normal school just wants you to get your homework done in a particular course and sign off on it and move you along. And there's a value to that. There's a reason that school evolved the way that it did. But as a reminder, tech me, technology isn't just about using electronic tools. It's about using them for a purpose. So when I post about this stuff and when we ask you to reflect on it on your blogs, the purpose isn't just getting credit toward graduation. The purpose is organizing your thoughts and doing the things in your life so that you have something to say on these blogs because of doing things in your life, that continues well after you graduate and hopefully enables you to be more successful. So let's come back to the actual tools. We are using 
our own email for the Open Source Learning Academy. It is super important that everyone knows where and how to access this tool. I'm going to put the rain loop link in the chat and I will save the chat and I will publish this alongside the recording. If you remember from last week, even if you were here live, I did post a recording in the video library section of the uh, Santa Maria blog. I'm gonna put this right here. So if someone is unable to make a meeting like our original orientation or last week's seminar or this week's seminar, this is where the recording will go. And it will often be accompanied by some deliverables. So I don't remember which day that it went under on the blog, that's your job to remember, but there were questions and an activity that were associated with last week's seminar. As I look back on this, I might just put that underneath the recording as well so that it's easier to find, but it's your job to make sure that you are getting everything you can out of this and showing that you know how to do this stuff. So if we go back to the email for a second, well, this is already logged in. All you need to do, and now it won't log me out, all you need to do is enter in the same credentials, your first and last name, no capital letters, no spaces, and the password that you created for the Open Source Learning Academy dashboard. Now, since we've got three returning students with us, students who have become learners, um, what I want to know right now is whether you all have had any questions or challenges about logging in to your accounts on the email, on the dashboard, or on your blogs. Has anyone run into any questions or challenges around using these tools so far? Okay, I'm getting a message from Jossie. Is it okay if I share this out loud, Jossie? Can I take that as a yes? <laughs> okay, um, awesome, thank you. So Jossie just asked, when I click to see the video from that last seminar, nothing pops up. Now on my page, when I click it, it looks like- All right, welcome everybody. This is the first- it looks like it works. So what I'm gonna do, Jossie, is put this link in the chat as well. And I'll put it to everybody just in case other people have the same issue. If the video isn't working, if the audio isn't working, or if the video doesn't come up, that says to me, it might be likely that there's something going on with a filter or the internet connection on your end. But whatever the case may be, we can get into the details and fix that because I know we're gonna have some working time this hour. Thank you for that though. Okay, it still doesn't work. Hey, Jossie, you know what? Why don't we do this? Since we're live and we only have a few people, uh, I made it so that everybody can share a screen. If you'd like to go ahead and share your screen and let's help you. Yeah, so I went to the um, website you sent in the chat and like nothing pops up. Huh. Well, I see what you see. Um, and I also recognize when I'm not the brightest person in the room on a specific topic. Martin, do you have any suggestions on this one? Um, <clears throat> okay, what is the browser? Is it uh, is that Chrome, actually? What, what are we on here? Um, could you just tell me what the browser is and what type of machine you're on? Um, so I'm not hearing anything. Is that it? Could be me. Um, Jossie, did you hear the question? No, I didn't. Okay, no. Martin was asking what browser you're using and what kind of a device you're on. Um, on the school laptop, uh, laptop, the tablet, the the one that they give, um, they give out to us. 
Okay. And did you get that this year? No, I had it um, since freshman year. Okay. So is that the Acer or the Chromebook? Um, no, it's... I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. What, uh, what browser does it have you on? Is it, is it Microsoft or is it Google Chrome? Oh, it's on Google Chrome. Okay. So Martin, could you hear that? She's on Chrome? Yeah, no, I just have to check um, before trying anything else. Um, so it might sound really simple, but to start with the basics, if you press refresh, so that's towards the top left, that's it, yeah. Um, okay, and um, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm wondering what kind of, um, um, uh, extensions you might have enabled, which might be preventing this, uh, from showing for you, you know, so there's security measures sometimes on, on browsers will, um, uh, prevent you from, um, uh, displaying some websites and, and, and uh, dynamic behaviors on the web page so you know we <laughs> this may take some time but if on the um so martin uh, may i i'm sorry may i cut in yeah i have a suggestion uh jossie why don't you hang out with this question for just a little bit i'm going to cover some basics so that we can make sure that the seminar that today's recording helps people who weren't here and okay. then we'll have we'll start a breakout room and Martin can meet you to get into the details and help you solve that problem, okay? Okay, thank you. Awesome, thanks for the question. I'm glad you brought it up. So to come back to logging in and making sure that things work, this is a really important part of that process. It might seem like a minor thing, but if Jossie opens her website and can't see the recordings, that kind of defeats the purpose. But the good news is all of these are solvable problems. So the moral of the story is, and please, if you have a friend or an acquaintance who's in this academy as well, and you know they're a little bit shy, tell them that the key thing is to ask, mention it, communicate. Because if we don't know there's a problem, it just looks like somebody's kind of not there. And we don't want to make any assumptions. We want to help. Now, if you remember... The key to everything really is the Open Source Learning Academy dashboard. And we started with this last year, but because everything moves at such a pace, we didn't really get into using this as much as some of you use, for example, Google Drive. And yet this has all of the same capabilities. So again, I'm going to put the link in the chat. And if you haven't already, please bookmark this in your browser or whatever device you use for the purpose. If you have a place where you save websites, for example, that can be convenient. Part of what we're gonna be talking about next week is managing our information. We mentioned password management last week. Well, browser tabs and URLs and bookmarks, dates, calendars, all that kind of stuff, if we do these things once, it's kind of like reading the instructional manual for a new device. I always, well, I shouldn't say always, I had a hard time doing that. I just wanted to start pushing buttons and see how things worked. What I realized though over time was that if I just spent a few minutes figuring things out at the beginning, then the rest of the experience worked so much better. So as a reminder, when you log in with the same user ID and the same password, this is the home page for the dashboard. And from here, if you click on this little waffle iron grid looking square in the upper left hand corner, you can see where my cursor is. If I click on that, it brings up a window that gives me choices. And if I don't wanna read all of this, and by the way, eventually we're gonna be video conferencing on our own space. But for right now, just to create the files that you need for your life, whether it's a resume or a letter, or if you're using documents or spreadsheets or presentations for your assignments that you have with Dr. Ulrich, 
you can click on the files button. And the files button will bring up your files. But this magic plus sign here in the circle, if you click on this, now you have all of the same choices that you do on Google or Microsoft, except that it's in our system, which means that whatever you create is all yours. So if I want to create a document, it's as simple as saying new Smosla, I'll say model document, that sounds fancier. And all of a sudden, I have a word processor that's available to me in real time. Best part is I can share this with Dr. Ulrich. We can collaborate on it just like we all collaborated on documents last year. And those of you who were here last week actually saw Sam and I, actually it wasn't just Sam and I, I think Kevin, you were here too, weren't you? Oh, uh, what? Do you remember working on a document? We just made a couple of comments to each other so we could see it. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. I just wanted to get an amen from the congregation so people here knew that, that it works. So when we do this stuff, you can actually share this for feedback with Dr. Ulrich. You can post it directly to your blog, which brings me to my next point. If I go to my Smosla, my learner blog, not the Smosla website blog, and I go to this one, um, what is the extension? What is the thing after the slash that I need to put in? And I know Kevin, Jossie, and Anthony, you all know this, so I'm, I'm looking for you to answer this question. What do I need to enter here to get to my dashboard, to get the login? WP admin, thank you, Jossie, you are correct. So it's WP hyphen or dash A-D-M-I-N. And when I click that, it brings me to another login. Again, it's the same exact login, our names, one word, no caps, no spaces. And then whatever password we chose, I log in. Now I'm on my dashboard. Now the beautiful part of this, and here, um, Kevin, are you in a position where you can share a screen? Or Jossie? If you're willing. I would love to use one of your blogs as a better example than mine because you've got more stuff on it than I do. Kevin, if you can, go ahead and share your screen because I'd love to see your dashboard. I want to show about the courses that you have in your drop down menu. Here, I'll try this with a different technology. Kevin! Okay, thanks, Jossie, go for it. So Jossie, before we get to the posts, can I ask you to go to the top left where it says Jossie's blog and it'll say visit site? Let's look at, yeah. And go to your, uh, right there in the center where it says academic, Thank you. Now, right now, this has all the courses for this term, and I actually left all the courses from last term live. And Dr. Elrich, I did get your email, and so I'll go through and I'll, I'll make it so that it's just this term, the current term that's visible. But all of those courses, and, and go back for a second, Jossie, to academic, yeah. If I click, so pick 21st century English as an example. Go ahead and click on that. And if we scroll down a little bit, we can see all of the posts that Jossie categorized as 21st century English. Great. Now, Jossie, if you're willing, take us back to the dashboard and let's create a new post and see how you did that. So go to posts. Yep, well, you, you beat me to it. You got the shortcut. Okay, title this whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Hi. Um, what should I tell you a little bit? Um, what's a course that you have this semester that you'd like to get some credit for right now? Um, 
I don't know. I guess um, biology. Biology, perfect. The study of life. Well, that's pretty general. Let's see if we can do this. Um, go ahead and put, uh, let's say, thoughts on biology. Okay, now, the beautiful thing about blogs is that the word blog is short for web log, and a log is a kind of journal. So in a way, every single one of our blog posts is a little bit of a mini journal. Now, if I'm Jossie, I'm probably thinking something like, well, what do you think about biology? Let me not put words in your mouth. What do you think of when you think of the word biology? Science. Great. When I think of biology, I think of science. Type that. See? Sometimes I forget I have to, um, how to spell things. So I. I That's okay. It's I S, S C I E N C E. Okay. Thank you. Beautiful. Now, I remember from your key interests last semester, we were talking about things like forensics and medicine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. So, what's one thing that you really would love to know more about biology? Um, honestly, I have no idea, but I, I feel like I would like to learn. I think everything, since I don't really like search about it as much as I, I'm supposed to, so. That's awesome. I love what you're saying right now. So let's just go ahead and write those thoughts and we'll just do one more sentence together, okay? So you can say something like, I'm not really sure about the details of biology, but I'm curious to know so much about it that I can't wait to search. Type something like that. Okay, now at the bottom, I would put something like, like skip a paragraph and say, stay tuned, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> leave, your, leave your readers wanting something more. Okay, now, first of all, this post by itself is gold because you know the profiles, you know the stereotypes. Nobody sees a high school junior coming and thinking like, yeah, you know, they're not gonna wanna do their work. I'm gonna have to hammer them with assignments. Wait, 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 what? this kid really wants to learn about biology, all of a sudden your stock goes up in their eyes. Now, if we're thinking about this practically, yes, it's good to share your thinking. It's great to show who you are, but also we want to make sure that every post matters because you're here for graduation requirements and we understand that. So what are you going to do to make sure that this post counts in the biology column when Dr. Ulrich and you take a look at what you've done to get course credit? Um, post it on the category, uh, cat post on the biology category. Yeah, now how do you do that? Um, we go on here and then you see categories and then you search for um, biology right here and you press it and then you publish it and it's on the category. All right, so hit publish and show us. And then we go to the here. And 
and it's right here. All right, so you did that pretty quickly. Jossie just clicked on her biology A slash B category, and this came up. Every single post that Jossie puts up and categorizes or tags with the biology category is going to be in biology. Now, let's go back to that post for a quick second. Let's go back to the draft. So on top, you can say, yep. So go to edit. Now, what if, see where it says type to choose block between the two paragraphs that you have? Yeah. Click on that. And I'm going to give you a sentence and we're going to play a little bit. So I'm going to, I'm going to help you out a little bit here. Okay. Um, when I was exercising yesterday, go ahead and type that. Oh. I'm going to do you a solid. There's no C after the X. Okay. ER. You really want to put that C back, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> also, do it yourself. It's your blog. Oh, wait, I'm so bad at spelling stuff. No, you're not. You're learning. It's a difference. I just sent it to you in a chat. Okay, um, what was the sentence again? I'm going to help you out here. Um, <clears throat> how about take the sentence that I just texted you or just uh, sent you in the chat and just hit copy and paste that into your blog post. Okay. Now, the reason that I'm doing this with Jossie and this is for not only Kevin and Anthony, but everybody who watches this recording. We want to use our time efficiently. And a lot of the stuff that we think about every single day involves more than one subject. In fact, the only place, and some of you have heard me say this before, but I'll say it again, the only place where we have to think about life subject by subject is in school. Everywhere else, it all kind of goes together. So now, as I think about Jossie's post, it not only qualifies as biology, what else can your post qualify for now, Jossie? If you go down to the category list. Um, it could go for um, physical fitness. Sure could. And it could go for PE if you're in a PE class. Yep, you can check the fitness box too. Okay. Now hit publish or update. So here's a lesson, super important. I'm going to make mention of this on the uh, Santa Maria Open Source Learning Academy site tomorrow. And I'm going to drive people right to this recording in this minute. Because every single one of you, every time you post, should be thinking about, huh, how many categories can I make this count for? Why wouldn't you? If you can make something, count, first of all, everything is 21st century English, unless you're writing about it in a different language. But I really want to make the point that this process is designed to integrate, to bring together these different disciplines because we all get smarter when we do. And part of being smarter is working smarter and not just working harder. So if you've got one post that actually touches more than one base. If Jossie wrote about how exercising calmed her down, well, that's mental fitness, that's mindfulness, and so on and so on. Let me pause at this point. Jossie or anybody else, do you have any questions? And for that matter, um, Dr. Ulrich and Martin, do you have anything that you wanna chime in on this before we move on to the next topic? No, I'm fine. I'm, I like, um... 
to the idea of the multiple posts because it does give students more opportunities to show engagement. It's a really good point. It, it is engaging because we're bringing more of us to the table. There's more parts of Jossie's life suddenly in that post that we can have some insight into. And a lot of the time, we're not looking to give critical feedback. Feedback isn't necessarily pointing out what somebody did wrong. That's part of it. We want to help you improve. But a lot of the time, it's pointing out what somebody did really well or even something that someone contributed that was exciting because it was new. All of the things that you post give us an opportunity to share more. Um, now, Martin, I'm feeling self-conscious. You're, you're joining us all the way from Ireland. We don't have a single new student who hasn't been provisioned. So one of the things I'm thinking about, since we don't have a current example of someone to uh, start from scratch, are there any tips because when Dr. Ulrich shares those links with our new students and they're doing this for the first time, is there anything that you'd like to share that will make that process easier or if they run into trouble, things that they can do to help? Um, yeah, no, that's, that's, a, that's a good uh, point. I mean, you know. Um, and thanks for letting me put you on the spot. Yeah, no, I'm just trying to um, uh, think really, it's, it's important that um, the people know that they can reach out um, for for assistance. Um, although it's a little bit tricky uh, prior to getting on the email, this is why it's so important to be able to you know get at least onto email um, so that um, uh, you know it's possible to ask for help by email. Um, so um, in terms of tips, I think. Um, it's very important to choose a difficult to guess password. Uh, that's the number one uh, uh, issue. And lots of um, learners uh, had um, had issues with, with passwords on their blogs because the blog is set up with um, uh, a, uh, a mechanism to that, that knows when your password is too easy to guess and it won't let you use it. So then we have to kind of <laughs> reissue uh, a, a password choosing link. So if you can um, think of um, a difficult to guess um, combination of alphanumeric um, characters, so letters and numbers and you know exclamation marks and other symbols as well, all count. So something is meaningful to you perhaps, um but uh really irrelevant to anybody else or just incredibly difficult to guess but something you'll remember um and uh and use that and that will be uh your the same login details for across all of the applications that you'll get to use next cloud we've talked about and talk and the dashboard uh, as well as your blog and uh your uh, access to email so it's important to get a good password that's my uh, number one tip all right and um yeah <laughs> okay so just to summarize that the wordpress system that we're using and wordpress is a brand name out there so you might have heard of that the version of it that we're using is open source and we're using it in a way that's unique to us so what i'm hearing you say is you want to choose a password that's not too easy because the system knows and it won't let you continue and we'll have to start over. And when you do choose a password to use a combination of letters, numbers, and symbols. Am I getting yep. that right? Yep. Okay. Uh, ideally, yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, as a pro tip, and I'm about to put this in the chat, one of the things that you can do, if you're a person who doesn't have a password manager, and you haven't quite figured out how to organize your passwords in your own life in such a way that you can consult them easily and make sure you don't lose them, and you still want to make something that's easy to remember but hard to figure out, you can use a phrase and capitalize different words in that phrase and then include a number or a special character. And I will put an example in the chat.
So I said, use a phrase for password 2023. Makes perfect sense when I remember it, but it would be hard for someone to guess that that would be a password for my account on a particular system. So Martin, I want to run this by you because I defer to you in all things technology. Is that a reasonable solution to the kind of thing you were suggesting? Yeah, right. And I mean, other sort of uh, little, little tricks of the trade are to replace some vowels with, with numbers. So just to take your example there, you might say, um, hold on a minute. Um, uh, it just obfuscates a little bit. So use a um, phrase might look like that. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just, I'll, I'll release it in a second. Um, okay, so you might have something like that. Um, and it just helps confuse the the bots and the and the nasties out there, the wonder of the internet sort of knocking on doors and, um, and that definitely includes our, our sites and so on. It just helps. Uh, really great selection. And so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for that. So we're coming up on the top of the hour, and I do want to make sure that, first of all, you know, it's funny because we talk about not playing favorites, but you kind of want to give the most attention to the people who are in the room. So my primary clients right now are Kevin, Anthony, and Jossie. Is there anything that you all need or that you have questions about that will help make your experience this term any better than it was yesterday. All right, thanks, Kevin. Martin, do we have time? Is this the time that you want to introduce Nextcloud Talk? Uh, if we've got, if we have time, uh, we can do that. Yeah. yeah. Sure, we've got about fifteen minutes. Does that give us a start? Sure. Yeah. Okay. You can share your screen if you like, or you can guide me and i'll play dj for you um, yeah if you play dj it's probably slightly easier um, okay. <laughs> um yeah so and so on the left hand column are a bunch of what talk calls conversations which are really like um sort of threads or could be sort of like topics in a forum if any of you have used discord um which is pretty popular especially for gamers um it's a little bit like you know that you can set up a, a you know a discord topic um or room it's often called but depending um which instant messaging application you're using so uh, very similar um you can set up a conversation um as many as you wish about anything so it's completely down to you we will set up some uh and one will be um uh, for example help so you could just head head to the the help conversation at any point and um and if you've got an issue there um i mean i'm talking about this the technology help uh, at least so um yeah that that will be um somewhere where you can um access um help <laughs> technology help um so um yeah, so here uh, we are looking at a group um, conversation or a group room, essentially. Um, and that is for, yeah, so this is uh, for, for the lead learners uh, bootstrapping, as we've called it. So this is to, to help us actually put together the, the roster and uh, and get things up and running. So that's, that's an example of, um, using a group room there um i mean what do you want to show here uh dr preston uh i mean uh, just to, to continue a quick tour i suppose we can see who's online and who isn't um on the right hand side uh dr ulrich is um away <laughs> oh, she's there now <laughs> yeah um yeah so you can see um uh, myself and Dr. Preston. Um, I think uh, this is really useful, Martin, because it's important for everyone to know what's coming, but also just to let you know what this looks like on the phone. Um, yeah. And I'll share my screen so I can make the image a little bit bigger. 
So if I'm looking at text on my phone down here, right up here is the next cloud icon and it works in the same way. So if I click that, then I see all the same conversations and my threads are all organized, but it's almost like having SMS, you know, whether you use IM on your phone, whether it's WhatsApp, whatever your chat or texting service is. And I know a lot of us prefer that to email or to looking at websites. Nextcloud on your phone will enable you to see, just like when you see a text message has popped up, if you see something on Nextcloud, you'll know that it's the Open Source Learning Academy, and you'll know that whether it's Dr. Ulrich wanting him, uh, to remind you of a meeting, or we've got progress report grades due, or whatever, the there's a seminar coming up today, whatever the things are, you will be much more able to get announcements instantaneously without having you go back and check over and over. So please keep your eyes peeled. We're gonna do an upcoming seminar on making sure that everybody's up and running on this. But in the meantime, the website's going to be the place with the information. I'll have a step-by-step -step installation so that you can just follow the steps and see some screenshots about how it looks on your devices. I'll put that together with Martin. And by this time next week, certainly two weeks, we will all be able to communicate on this channel as well. Martin, was there anything to add on that for today? No, no, I think that's that's um, that's fine. Obviously, I'm looking forward to getting everybody up and running on the uh, instant messaging uh, and so on. I mean, you know, most people have used something like WhatsApp by now or Facebook Messenger and so on. So, you know, uh, everybody will feel right at home, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm glad that you said that though, because if anyone ever does not feel right at home with any of these tools, you know, I'm tending to go quickly today because I'm talking to people who've all been here and done that and gotten the t-shirt. But I also know that some of you watching the recording, and I hope if you weren't here that you're watching this recording because you need this, as you watch these things, and as you see the screenshots, and as you think about the tools, all of this is brand new. And I'm always reminded that it's important to slow down a little bit and remember that we weren't having any of these conversations before campuses closed a couple of years ago. And even now, I don't want to assume that people are using tools that they may or may not be. So if something is new to you, and especially if you don't want to make it a public question or take up other people's time with it, please feel comfortable to talk privately with Dr. Ulrich, Dr. I almost said Dr. Martin. Sure, Dr. Martin, you're promoted, uh, or me, because we're here to help. We genuinely, the reason that we're doing all of this is we want to make your learning convenient. We don't want to make the actual process the hard part. Your learning is challenging enough. All of our lives are challenging enough. So all the things that we're talking about today, it may seem like a lot of information, but we're here to help you make it easier. Um, Anthony, thanks for your accidental message. Does anybody have any parting words before we close the hour for today? Dr. Ulrich, are there any announcements that you'd like to share or anything that you'd like to? Um, I would just hope that students begin using this more, even returning students, it seems that they're very reluctant to get started in this. I don't know what kind of participation there was last year, um, but I think we're up to 17 or 19 students. So, uh, but that also will rest with me in meetings, um, leveraging um, blogs a little bit more than assignments, than straight out assignments. That's a really good point. So as I'm looking at some of the statistics for our blogs. Put it this way, y'all. You've got a journal topic, you've got mental fitness, you've got physical fitness, and now you've got courses after your meeting with Dr. Ulrich. What that means is you've got the opportunity for a minimum of three blog posts a day. That's not a lot. It sounds like a lot. If I say, well, 15 every week, that sounds like a big deal. But you and I both know, I mean, Jossie and I did a post together live and talked our way through it, and it still took less than five minutes. 
So in 15 minutes a day, you can have three blog posts up. If you have less than three blog posts a day, consider yourself behind. Now, I'm not saying that to be mean or put pressure on you. I'm saying it because I know, especially the people who are here live on this call, I know you got more in you than that. And I can't wait to see what you're thinking this year. I know Dr. Ulrich is looking forward to it too. So I'll close by saying thank you. It's what I always feel, really. I'm grateful for the opportunity to work with such talented, imaginative people as they're exploring different topics. I'm grateful to work with Martin, who is, the guy's forgotten more about technology than I am ever going to know if I had another lifetime to do it. And I'm super grateful to be working with Dr. Ulrich because I know how much she cares and I know how much experience she brings to the table. So thank you. Get to posting. If you have any questions at all, please do reach out. We're here for you. And Jossie, Anthony, and Kevin, thank you so much for representing and showing up to the seminar today. There's a great speech from one of Shakespeare's plays, and there's a, a, an English king who goes on about the band of brothers, and those who were not with us today will hold themselves cheap. When those that with us fought on St. Crispin's Day, I'll spare you the whole Shakespeare thing, but I would rather have the proud, the few, and see what you guys can do then have 10,000 people, half of whom go, eh. So thanks for being here with us. Have a great day, everybody. Any parting comments, jokes, riddles, anecdotes, criticisms from anybody before we close? Just that I'd like to uh, address um, what's going on with Joss's um, browser. <laughs> oh, right. Thank you, Martin. Or, router or whatever it could be. Yeah. Okay. I'm yeah. going to open a breakout room for Jossie and Martin to talk browsers. And... Kevin and Anthony, if you have stuff to do, you are out of here. You're more than welcome to hang out. Kevin, I'm tracking your icons and you're distracting me, but it's hilarious. Thank you for that, brother. <laughs>